Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. Linux doesn't lack in the video editing department. You've got Kdenlive, Lightworks, OpenShot, you've got uh, Olive, you've got DaVinci Resolve, you've got Shotcut, and you've got one, just one video editor using GDK, and it's called PTV. So let's take a look at what it can do. So PTV is a non-linear video editor written with GDK and GNOME in mind. The problem is, on Linux, you mostly have video editors using either their own toolkit or Qt, which means that they will integrate pretty well inside of KDE, but not that well at all inside of GNOME, Mate, Cinnamon, or any other GDK-based desktop environment. This is not the case with PTV. It follows the GNOME guidelines, it has a header bar and all the interface things that you might like in GNOME. I'd compare PDV to iMovie on the Mac. It's got a simple interface, it's very easy to handle to begin, but it hides also a ton of complexity behind its very simple appearance. PTV is actually a pretty old project. It started in 2003, and it actually made it into Ubuntu's official ISOs for three different releases, 10.04, 10.10, and 11.04. It eventually got removed because most Ubuntu users didn't really need a video editor by default out of the box, and also because PTV wasn't, at the time, very much ready for prime time. So nowadays, PTV is still a very actively maintained and developed project, and it actually got a brand new release, a very big one, in September, uh, which prompted me to have another look. And fun fact, well, not actually fun, but it's still a fact, I used PTV when I began the channel. When I started out in 2018, I used PTV for about six months to render and edit all of the videos that I published on the channel, before I moved to Caden Live. PDV has another advantage, which is it's using the GStreamer backend, which is the, the GNOME media library, if you will. And this means that every codec you have installed on your system, whether through the GStreamer plugins or otherwise, will be usable by PTV, which is a good thing, because you don't have to handle other codecs, you just use what's installed on your system. Okay, so what can PTV do? PTV will be familiar to anyone who's ever dabbled with a non-linear video editor. You have your media library, your tracks, and your preview pane. You just drag the video files you want to use inside the media library, and then drag them onto your tracks, which are called layers here. You can then cut the video clips to remove unwanted footage, add effects, transitions, audio, and then render the whole project as a complete video file. If you're not familiar with that workflow, PTV actually has a guided tutorial that points out, right from inside the application, how to use it. PTV's interface is super simple. It uses the whole bottom part for your layers, where you'll drop your video, audio, or image files, and the top is hosting your media library, the various effects you can apply, as well as the clip's properties and the transitions you can use to smooth out moving from one clip to another. Now you also get, obviously, your monitor when you can see a live preview of your work. It uses a header bar with very simple commands, undo and redo, a render button, a save button, and the options menu. On the surface, PTV seems simple, too simple, but it hides some advanced features. First, you can work using proxy clips. This feature allows you to turn your source files, which are probably of a high resolution, high bitrate, into more workable formats, either into codecs that are correctly and very well handled by the system, or through a diminishing of the resolution of the clip, which means that in your monitor, you won't see the complete source clip, for example, at 4K, but you might see a 720p preview. This means that you can edit 4K footage on a potato computer without having too many performance issues. And that's actually a very important feature for PTV, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Next, PTV has a very good backup system. If your application crashes during editing, it will pick back up where you left off without losing your work, which is a very important feature. In my testing for this video, PTV had been super stable. I experienced zero crashes, zero problems using the NVIDIA proprietary drivers, and when I used it back in 2018, it happened to crash from time to time, but it wasn't very often. PTV also makes use of keyboard shortcuts, and you can customize each and every one of them, so if you're already used to something else, you can tweak how PTV works to suit your habits, which is always nice. Now, for more advanced editing, PTV supports a lot of effects, and I mean a lot. You have audio filters, color manipulation, various compositing modes if you want to create a specific look, a bunch of transformations and deformations, blurs, rotations, you name it. These effects can easily be applied by dragging and dropping them onto a clip, and can be configured with the clip pane where all effects are located. Most of these effects also support keyframes, which means you'll be able to time them easily if you need them to. This really pushes PTV into something more than what iMovie, for example, could let you do. It also has a simple text tool that you can access by clicking on blank space. 
It also supports animations and keyframes, so you're all set to create animated titles as well. Creating transitions between clips in your project is also pretty easy. You just need to overlap the two clips you want to animate, select the overlap and choose the transition you want to use. There is a lot of choice, although these are all wipes, so they'll just make one clip appear on top of another through a series of specific shapes or motions. You can't create more advanced transitions like blurring the clips or some kind of zooming effect, but these transitions should be enough for anyone to get started. Now when rendering time comes, the render dialog looks super basic. It only shows you the presets and where you want to store your rendered file and how to name it. If you unfold the advanced panel though, you'll get to pick the container, the frame rate, the codec, the audio sample rate and codec and more. You can also select to render from the proxy clips, although if you use scaled proxies that use a lower resolution, I'd advise against that as your video will not be as high quality as it should be, or you can also pick to render from your original source files, which is probably what you should do just to ensure that the quality is as good as possible. And that's about it. PDV is a very simple non-linear video editor, simple interface, quick to use, quick to learn, and it also hides a bunch of complexity with effects, with transitions, and with proxy clips. It will not replace Adobe Premiere, DaVinci Resolve, or any more advanced like Final Cut Pro 10, any more advanced non-linear video editor anytime soon, that's for sure, but it's still pretty usable. It also has a bunch of issues. So first, PTV doesn't use hardware acceleration, at least not on my Nvidia graphics card. And this means that your timeline preview, anytime you add effects, you add some titles or images on top of your footage, the timeline will slow down to a crawl. And this is a big issue because you cannot preview your work at its initial or at its final frame rate and quality, because you have to use video proxies. For anything other than 1080p footage, you're probably going to need to use scaled proxies. And that's a shame, because you can't really work that well using low resolution sources. I tried using my 4K 60fps footage recorded from my phone directly onto PTV. And that's on the Ryzen 5 2600 with an RTX 2060 and 32GB of RAM. This was a stuttery mess, and I had to use a low scaled resolution proxy at 720p for it to be actually usable. This is a shame, because the interface is so simple you'd expect everything to work smoothly, but it really doesn't. On DaVinci Resolve the same clips were actually super smooth, the timeline preview was super normal, and you could just scrub through and play, pause, start back again without any issues. Now this specific issue means that PTV is ruled out for my daily use. Because I need to use a lot of effects, color correction, specific transitions, I like to add some titles or images on top of my videos, and if I do that, this basically means that my preview is slowing down to a crawl and I cannot really correctly work. But if you're only using some basic footage and not super high resolution stuff, and you don't add a lot of transitions and effects, PTV is going to work fine for you. Another issue that PTV shares with most video editors is that the effects aren't commented at all. You simply don't know what they're going to do unless you try them on one of your clips. So discoverability isn't really the best here. I wish there was a way to know what each effect would do before applying it. Now apart from that, I can't say I experienced many issues with it. It was stable, rendering worked fine, although it did take a lot of time as PTV doesn't use the GPU to render. A 20 minutes long video exported from 4K clips to 1080p 30fps took about an hour and a half to render, where DaVinci Resolve exports this kind of stuff in about 10 minutes. Once again, if you're working with smaller resolution files, you probably won't see this as an issue. KDE users will probably prefer Caden Live to PTV because it will integrate way better with their desktop environment, and although it is way more complex, the interface can be completely modified, so if you wanted to have something super simple without a lot of complexity in it, you could basically customize your Caden Live to look like that. Now, if you want to try out PTV for yourself, it's available on FlatHub, so most distros should be able to use it. And that's it for this tour of PTV. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, don't hesitate to like or dislike if you didn't. You can also subscribe and turn on notifications for more videos like this. If you really want to help support the channel and make it grow, you can also join my amazing Patreon subscribers and YouTube members and get access to a weekly Patreon cast. That's right, I moved it from monthly to weekly and the right to vote on the videos I'll produce each month. Check the links in the description below. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!